Here we go. Oh, Father, I just want to thank you again, Lord, for this wonderful group of people, Father, that we're all one. We're one in you, Lord. We just, we love you, Father. We love the things that you show us, the things that you develop in us, Lord. There's so much, there's so much of you to learn and to love and to understand, Father. It's a never, a never, it's an infinite process and it's beautiful. It's always beautiful, Father. So Lord, we step into your heart together. And we wait and we listen and we see and we are thankful. We're thankful to be here and to be a part of this. Thank you, Father. Well, I immediately saw this big splash of paint, of green paint, green. And green to me means life, abundance, newness, the spirit of counsel. So it means a whole bunch of different things to me. And I, when I stepped in, I immediately saw all different colors of confetti falling all over me as if I had just entered into uh, a party. Wow. It, it, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and that's life. And so to me, it connects with the green because joy and party with Jesus is life. Yes. Thank you. Yes, it is. Thank you. I saw the release of like a butterfly launch. Um, was it, did you notice the colors of it or where you were or did you release it from your hands? I was going to say, I saw it being released from the hands. I think maybe even like the father's hands, like the yeah. butterfly being released. Mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily see the colors. I felt okay. I felt like there were multiple colors, but yeah, I didn't. Yeah. And of course, the butterfly to me, mostly, most of the time, I hear transformation when somebody says butterfly, but it, it could mean other things too. Yeah, transformation would. That's what it would mean for me. When you were praying us in, Jill. Um, I saw a, I saw a stand, I saw us around, not necessarily in a circle, but um, we were passing a soccer ball. It, we were just, you know, with our hands, we weren't kicking it or anything. It was just, we were just passing the soccer ball and it was black and white and the shapes stood out to me. And I thought, is that a, is that a hexagon or a pentagon? So I pulled up a soccer ball and the black part was pentagons and the white part was hexagons. Oh, I didn't realize that they were different shapes, you know, on I don't I don't know that they all are. I just when I pulled one up, that's what it that's what it was. So anyway. And I've I've Is never it, heard the Pentagon before and it, it reminded me of what we hear from uh, the Capitol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think about the Pentagon. I've never, you know, as many years as we've heard about math and been in math classes, I've never really heard it, Pentagon, <laughs> and thought about it that way at all. So in the, in the hexagon, is um, is that eight? Is that eight sides? What is hexagon? Is that six or eight? or, or do we Six. Know? Six, okay. Uh, the eight side is okay. octagon. Octagon, oh, that's, that's it. 
Okay, thank you. So we were just passing it like with our hands to one another around the circle? Correct. We were just, it was just, we were handing it, but kind of, it just kind of rolled off, off our hands into the next person's hands. Okay. Very instead good. of just, instead of placing it down, it's kind of like we just kind of rolled it off our hands. Yeah. To wow. the next person. Yeah. So six plus eight is 14. That's two sevens. Oh. You know, if you were to look at it that way. Well, that's interesting. Well, it would be. It would be five plus six. The he the pentagon is five sides, and the hexagon is six. Oh, what was the octagon? She was asking what the eight sided one was. Okay, that's Thank a you, stop sign. Yeah. How you doing, Karen? Welcome. Hi, Karen. Her sound must not be on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, now I can see it. Hi, Karen. Hi, Hi Karen. Karen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I'm here telling Sharon about ascensions, and all of a sudden, I was like, oh, no, I'm late. <laughs> you, you can always come late. I see your note right now. <laughs> uh, so we just started because we were, as usual, talking before the meeting, and and uh, you want to hear what we've what we've seen so far, or do you just want to? Yeah, I'll just jump right in. Okay. Okay. So, um, where are you? We, where are where are we? We're right in the beginning. Is that what you're asking? Okay. So yeah, here. I mean, like you got Lady Wisdom. Where are you guys? Okay. So here we we saw a um, someone. We, we we're all standing in a circle like passing this soccer ball around, but it was just rolling out of our hands. So we okay. were, and then, and then um, saw a green paint splash and then um, a multicolored confetti just falling on us. Cool. And then we saw a butterfly being released probably from the father's hands. So that's where we is. Oh, there's the picture of the soccer ball. Thanks, Mary. You know, butterflies represent new beginnings. Oh, and new beginnings. And new beginnings. Yeah, I said what they remind me of is transformation. But yeah, new beginnings. I mean, all these symbols mean different things to different people, which is wonderful. It makes it really rich. So mm -hmm. new beginnings. And soccer balls are like teamwork, strategies fun, unity. Yeah, you know, um, the unity and the teamwork really, really resonates with me as well. Uh, because of the way the ball was being passed, it, you know, it's like it knew, knew what to do. It just rolled off our hands. Is that right, Mary? It just sort of did its thing. Yes. <laughs> Okay, yeah. The, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, sorry. The pentagram can actually um, represent the fivefold ministry because it's five sided. I just okay. researched that, which is interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. Write that down.
You know, I really, I really like where this is. I mean, what we've seen so far, you know, the unity, the life and abundance, you know, spirit of counsel, the confetti, meaning, you know, representing possibly joy for sure and life, fun, you know, the butterfly being released, the transformation and new beginnings. So, and the green for growth. Oh, for growth, yeah. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, moving into something new. Yes, thank you. Yes. My cat is snor snorkeling. When I was here, great. I just want to say when you were talking about we entered in and, and hit the you seen the splash of green, it immediately Psalms 23 came up in my mind because of the as he makes us to lie down in green pastures, it's like life and newness. But the whole aspect of that scripture just popped and it still resonates with me. So I guess I'm gonna say it. Oh yeah, that's good. Psalm 23. Hey, I see us actually playing soccer in that field of grass <laughs> by the river, by that, you know, stream. Hallelujah. Yes. And the sheep are off to the side and they're nice sheep. They're not going to be the ones that butt you. <laughs> So I was looking at the Hebrew alpha, alphabet chart and um, the number five is hey, and guess what six is? Vav. <laughs> Vav hey. Vav hey. <laughs> so that's, that's uh, you know, you got the yod hey, Vav hey. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I'm looking up Psalm 23. Yeah, I think Vav is how um, Ian Clayton said that it was a coming together. So as we're coming together with God. And a, a hook it's connecting obvious. heaven and earth. You guys mind if I if I read Psalm twenty three? Sounds good. So uh, the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in His luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me th through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. And I'll never be lonely because you're always in me. You become my feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink until my heart overflows. 
so why would I fear the future? For your goodness and your love pursue me all the days of my life. I love that. I love that. I, I've always loved that in scripture. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence, which that that last that last line of the scripture that was that was before Jesus. So we're in his presence forever now, right? At now. I choose to be. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I I just love your goodness and your your goodness and your love pursue me all the days of my life. Love that. Or your goodness and your mercy. Well, go ahead and read that last line again because I didn't. Okay. Okay. Then afterward, when, is that what you mean? Yes. Okay. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. So, I, well, but, so, but it, it's not really saying that we're not with him right now. It just says that that's where we're go That's, that's our eternal home. Yes. I, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I agree. But yeah, um, I agree. But um, that Psalm 23 um, has been in uh, the forefront of my thought and prayer life in the, I don't know, at least the last week, maybe two. Really? Yes. Um, and the first time I on purpose went in, you know, I on purpose went to be with father, like, I mean, to, I went to ascend, if you will, on purpose. I, I mean, knowing that's what I was doing in the, before that I was just, I would go and I would just send worship. I would ascend in worship. I would ascend in prayer. And it's not something I necessarily um, on purpose thought that's what I was doing. I just knew that that's what happened. It yeah. was like, you know, that's just what happens when you, when you're really in, in your, in worship and when you really are truly in, um, in prayer, that's just what happens. But, um, anyways, with Psalm 23, the green pastures with the living grass and everything there, everything in that place was a lot, is alive. Um, colors are vibrant and, and so much there's so there's even life to colors and Jesus was you know, he let me come into this place and experience just a small he heavenly perspective just through that Psalm 23. I entered in through that scripture. And, um, and Jesus was waiting for me. And he took me from there. You know, we, 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 I, I went there as a child with a childlike, um, heart and and I just wanted to I just wanted to be with him and run and play and experience heavenly places and and it was uh more I mean it was just it was so vibrant and real but uh but anyways the scripture lately to me um I, it's just like every word of the scripture and it doesn't really matter which translation I've listened to or read it, 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 any of them it still has such meaning and depth every every word has such depth to me right now in my in my spiritual life and in, and um there, it just feels 
like comfort and protection and nourishment and um, just so many, so many aspects of, of Jesus and, and God and Holy Spirit and what they all mean to me um, in that scripture. And, but it really, it, it's just been on the forefront lately. That's really cool. You know, in the Berrien translation, the last verse says, um, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah, I like that. I prefer that one. <laughs> yeah, me too. The other one sounds like someone was stuck in, in churches, and so they believe you have to be dead to go to heaven. Yeah. And I was listening to uh, someone who is Jewish, and I guess they oh, there's a group of them that always believed in the mysticism of Judaism, and that you could just go and be in the presence of God. Love it. And uh, Angela wrote 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Beautiful. That, that reminds me of the butterfly. <laughs> you know, Jill, I was reminded of this. In college, I used to draw butterflies, color them, and I used to write that scripture on them, and I used to give them to people. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Wonderful. That's so cool. I love that. Yeah. Well, there you go. Let's see, I'm going to put that in the chat as well. I just sense that um, even though I had to step out for a moment, I left the room, but I came back. I really sense that it's happening to everyone. The same thing has been happening to me a little bit in that I'm more aware of where I'm at sometimes with the Lord versus just like reading or just praying and, and then getting into the study. I'm getting more into him and, um, and he's, Allowing me to sense it, feel it, think it, know it, see it, you know. Yeah. And I think that that is beautiful. That's why I love these groups. Um, it has helped me to see that here and also to experience that not here, you know, at home mm -hmm. or where I'm out somewhere else, you know. And also when I go to sleep at night, um, I'm not necessarily in my bed. So I know that he takes me places and they're, they're not things where I could like sit down and write what he's told me. It's just things that it's just like hidden or just tucked away or something. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, but, <laughs> but I really sense that he's doing a lot more than I have been able to admit and be aware of or whatever and coming here is helping me to put those two worlds together the world where yes i'm here i go shopping i eat i have to cook and i have to buy some things but <laughs> the busyness really has been going on spirit with him and so um thank you for just letting me share that i don't know yeah, no, I, I love that Good. I hear you, Linda. I feel exactly the same. I, I, that, I could have said everything that you said there. I feel exactly the same. <laughs> it's funny, cute, and awesome of him that he has us on a journey of reality, the actual reality of what is actually going on. And so that was the point that I was trying to make was that we're actually in his reality. Yes, but we we're just starting to come bump into it, you know, just kind of like, hmm, 
you know, used to, we would like maybe see the edge of something and still not know what it was. And not like I can really put my finger on exactly what everything is, but I just sense that it's right there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be speaking about it. And then what I'm saying is what I've experienced there with him. It wasn't in a classroom and it wasn't with y'all and it wasn't with my study or my listening or whatever. It was just something that is there deposited by him. Exactly. Oh, mysteriously deposited. Mysteriously deposited. And I go, did you write that down? And I'm serious (laughs) because it's like, I wished I could have written it down. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's amazing what he's doing. It's amazing. This is really a a beautiful realm. I mean, and I don't mean just because of, you know, visual, what I'm seeing with my spiritual eyes, but the the beauty of the things that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing, I'm wondering if anyone else is sensing, feeling, hearing, or whatever, but I just saw this magnificent uh, seven- that you would write, but it's not with a pen. It's not with a stroke of a pencil or an implement. It's got items or whatever uh, life is in it. Let's say like flying birds. I don't know exactly what's in this seven, but it also might be a a letter of the Hebrew alphabet too. And um, that is moving around now. In other words, the, the animals or whatever the birds seem to be flying in this form of a seven that's landed. It's landed. So it's a seven that you would like put down in front of you. And it's a seven standing up in front of you. And it's uh, very vibrant. And I can even hear the animals, mostly birds. Is it a particular color? Um, it's Everything is multicolored, but it is, uh, I would say, in the softer colors muted muted sweet gentle not vibrant like purples and like that it's just very light pale colors because the what the lord is showing me he's wanting us to see the items that's in there versus the color but there is color and now it's landed uh huh. It's landed onto the, and it's stand. It's a standing up. It's like on its own, on its own. And I see, you know, um, people, uh, kind of like you would in a uh, reading in a book or looking at a movie in front of you. And I see the father and the son talking and the seven spirits. So there's like a bunch of people in action. And um, that has come to our all of our focus of attention. Um, in, in this realm, not part of the seven that you see? Yeah, it's looking at the seven. That's looking at the seven. Okay, so we're all looking at it. Uh-huh. Okay. Because I think it came into life, light with the... Uh, movement of the animals and i'm saying birds but there might be other animals as well there yeah i mean it really screams of to me creation perfection completion Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. wonder what maybe anybody else what they were getting from uh the seven that, that linda saw is anybody getting anything else
seven also represents Zayn in the Hebrew alphabet. Okay. Spell that, please. Z A Y I N. Okay. Thank you. Doesn't that one mean like the, the va a vav that's been crowned? Isn't that what that means? I was looking it up. I'll look at it. Let me look. The uh, original, I mean, the like I call it the root meaning. Uh, is to cut or cut off, or even a weapon. And then, you know, I, I tell everybody this, that all these teachings on the Hebrew letters, everybody has a different take on it because the Hebrew letters interact differently with all of us, just as the Holy Spirit interacts differently with all of us. The same thing with the living letters. So I often go to the root and then whatever, whatever the Lord is saying to me about it. Does that make sense, Angela? Yes. <laughs> what Thank I see you for saying that because I looked up on two different charts and I'm getting like two completely different things. I'm like, oh, uh -huh. yeah. that's I why you just, just, yeah, just, just let Holy Spirit talk to you about it. You know, because that letter is going to present itself differently to you, Karen, than it would to Angela. It'll say something different. Well, the Zion is the seventh letter. Now, I didn't know that. Uh, maybe y'all did. <laughs> and it represents the sound. And remember what I was saying about the seven. There were sound coming from it that I could hear the birds. But I believe there's other creatures that are in the seven from heaven i don't know what they are but i i just can tell the birds are there and i can hear the yeah. birds yeah karen i think karen brought up oh, karen or, or angela brought that up that it was the seventh letter yeah it was me it was the seventh letter and it represents seven So let's let's take a look at the um, because you know other people are, it's it's pulling it's getting the attention you know of other people that are here with us in this realm. So I'm just curious curious about uh, what what will be revealed or what it is that Father may want to show us. So. Huh. It's also uh, connected to the to food and sustenance. The meaning of the word. Uh, it means a sword or sharp weapon is explained above. And the meaning of the word is also connected to food and sustenance. Hmm. I read, I'm reading something that says the top of the Zion is the handle and the vertical leg is the blade. Another interpretation is that it's a crown and a scepter. Um, thus, it alludes to power and authority. It's like it's being, it's like it's being released. And it's released over us somehow. I'm just, I'm just, I know I'm just getting little pieces at the time. But. <laughs> so, I wanted, oh, the, pardon me. Sorry. 
Go ahead. The, um, the animal, an animal that I see or saw, I got a glimpse, in, but it was a zebra. And I don't know if that's because of the Z, but when I was trying to look up Zayn, it was like it was superimposed in my vision. <laughs> the zebra? Like between, yes, like between <laughs> me and, uh, you know, I'm looking it up on my phone. And so it was between me and the phone. <laughs> You know, that's kind of funny because uh -huh. the only animal I saw during this whole conversation has been a zebra. No way. But you know how you just kind of like brush that off or yeah. maybe I was just see, you know, seeing whatever. But now that you said that, I'm just going to say, so that's confirmation. Two of us saw the zebra. So I was just going to say, like, with the creation stuff, um, I was sensing that, too. I was thinking in Genesis about, like, the power of creation when the Holy Spirit was hovering over the earth, that kind of thing. But when we started talking about Zion or however you pronounce that, I was instantly thinking of um, the Vav being crowned. And um, the idea that was coming to me was about how we are the crown of creation. Ooh. Oh, yes. Mm. So. Beautiful, mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. And by eating God's bread, Jesus, what Jesus has for us, we are learning to, who we are in our authority and our power. Kind of like the um, metamorphosis that takes place when we have communion, when we when we partake of communion. That's what that reminds me of, Karen. Yeah. Well, you know, this whole thing I realized today has been changing me. You know, ascending with you guys, because yeah. I actually was reading uh, one of Paul's letters. I forget now which one I was in. I think Hebrews. Anyway, he usually confuses me because his sentence can last an entire page. <laughs> and um, I actually understood him. It's the first time ever. Like he made sense because of all the ascent, how much I've been growing through all these ascensions. It's, it's like, it's, I, I realize it's changing me. It is. We do change. We change because we you know, it's like we honor those realms and we spend time in them and it does change us. I mean, it does change us physically. It, it's uh, nobody would believe it unless they experienced it, but it does. <laughs> okay, so I just found Genesis 1, 29 through 31. It says the voice, so I'm assuming that's a translation uh -huh. it says the crown of god's creation is a new creature a creature that can sound the heartbeat of its creator that creature made male and female reflects god's own relational richness the human family is to join god in the ongoing work of creation the earth below and the sky above with all their inhabitants are too beautiful and too good to be left alone they need the tender care and close attention that only god's favored creature can give and then it says down here, maybe this is the actual scripture. I don't know what that was, but this is also really good. That was really beautiful, good. though, that what you read. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, but this even talks about the animals and the green. It just, I'm like, wow, this just like wraps okay. it all up. Yeah, it says, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant that grows on the earth and every fruit bearing tree. They will be your food and nourishment. As for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky and every small creeping creature, everything that breathes the breath of life. I have given them every green plant for food. And it happened just as God said, the God, then God surveyed everything he had made, savoring its beauty and appreciating its goodness. Evening gave way to morning. That was day six. And I know we talked about the number six. So I thought that was interesting too. Yeah. I, you know what? I don't think I've ever really 
read that translation. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. So that was uh, Genesis 1, 29 through 31 in the voice. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can post that for us. So I just looked up the meaning of zebra and it says a zebra animal sim symbol represents community, freedom, balance, and individualism. Whoa. Which I thought it's really interesting because when you were talking about a butterfly, you were mentioning other things, but to me it was just screaming freedom, freedom. Yes. And then and then community with the ball or passing the football around. Yes. And then um, balance and individualism. I don't know what that relates to, but but it's all quite interesting. Yes, it is. I mean, I think it all really ties in. It really does tie in. Thank. I'm so glad you shared that, Avril. And I mean, just because I I saw butterfly as those things. Um, please go ahead and share. Well, it it does mean freedom to me because it just adds to the richness. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I'll add that zebras are my favorite animals in the whole world. Really? <laughs> <Wow>. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy knew that. He did, yeah. <laughs> and my granddaughter, my uh, second grandchild, uh, she loves zebras. She, she, I gave her one for Christmas, you know, stuffed animal. <laughs> yeah, it's multi multicolor and it's soft and it's just beautiful. I do want to say, as y'all were talking and saying and describing the zebra and stuff, I actually seen almost like what a mirror image of a tree would be. You know, the trees, sometimes y'all see the trees, the pictures of the trees of the life that, that people have, except this one, it looked like the branches were growing out on the top, but they didn't have any leaves, but then it had the almost like a spiral cord down. It looked like the trunk was kind of spiraled down, but then it looked like the branches on the bottom, but they were the same. They were real deep roots. It was the roots real deep, but then it also had the deep branches at the top and that the trunk was almost as a twisted cord. And so when y'all were saying that, I was looking at this and I'm looking and I'm going, well, where's the top? Which one is the top? Oh, the roots. And it almost looks like a mirror image, but then I heard life. And it was the mirror image of, 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 of what I didn't, it wasn't, hear. it wasn't the mirror image. Okay. You know, if you go into some churches, you'll see like the metal things of the church. It's, it's what people have in representation to the tree of life, yeah. but it's just yeah. the top of the tree. It just has like the branches with no leaves. And, but this, instead of just a regular trunk, this was a twisted trunk, almost like a three cord bla braided trunk. And it twisted around and it went like it was going in the ground, but then it looked like the branches in the ground, but the branches were the roots. So either which way you looked at it, it had the branches and it had the roots. That, you, yes, I understand now. Yes, that is really interesting to me. There's a verse that says something about the oak tree's roots going deep and that when uh, the uh, weather changes um, or seasons change, it doesn't lose its leaves because its roots are so grounded so deeply into the I think um... I think I've heard that before. I don't, but I don't know um, which book it's in. In the Bible. are we talking about Psalm one? It, it. Do you have it there? Here, I'll yeah, hang on. I do. Okay, great. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That's it. 
and that's what that's what I thought of when Mandy was um, picturing the tree because that's how I always pictured it that the roots look just like the, the branches really? all going deep down into God's I always pictured <laughs> Jesus or God down there uh-huh <laughs> um Well, and, and the, what it said to me also, you know, the, 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 you said it was like a braid. So it's that, that three chord strength, but also uh, it, it, um, the, that the, the, the roots, you know, affect, um, you know, the growth of the plant. I mean, they're, they're, they are a, an, uh, not an image, but a reflection, like, uh, you know, like when I look at a tree, um, I, I'll, now I'll never look at a tree the same, actually. <laughs> but without, you know, that incredible root system, you wouldn't see the, the beautiful growth, you know, the branches, and eventually, of course, you know, the the leaves and the fruit and all. And uh, since I, I planted all these flowers for my mother, um, uh, when we first moved in, you know, I, I really had to take, we planted and it got really hot really quick. And you know, that can kind of stress out your, your flowers, your plants and the roses, but, um, so I, I, I was just like intense about taking care of them because, you know, it's an investment when you, when you plan a lot of these things, you yeah. uh, know, for one. Um, but the other is, you know, I just, I just really wanted her to enjoy the flowers. She just always loved that. So, but I could, I could really tell when the, when the plant all of a sudden, you know, like the roots really sunk down because they shot up so quick. It was, I mean, it was unbelievable. All these rose plants, you know, they were like kind of struggling. They were definitely stressed for, I'm going to say like two months. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, they took off. So anyway, that's my little gardening story. There you go. <laughs> I have another verse, a uh, number of verses concerning a tree planted by the water. And when I envisioned uh, a tree trunk, sort of like a three strand cord that can never be broken. Um, it's Jeremiah 17, verses seven to eight, seven and eight. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. 
And it reminded me of you saying, Jill, you saw this green splash of paint. And our leaves, yes. to me, our leaves are always green as we trust in the Lord, no matter what our circumstances and no matter what, whether, to me, it was the body of Christ. We'll stay green when we do not look to see what our differences are, but when we look to see what we can agree on. And collectively, like a three strand cord that's never broken, as we ascend, no matter what, maybe the small differences, the big, I don't know, the big star that's the same is our father. Yes. Ascension into his presence is where all of our green uh, begins and ends. And we bring that green back down to earth, the growth. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And it, I mean, it really ties into this realm we're in. And not to be anxious because we yeah. actually never cease to bear fruit. Even when we feel that we're not. Yeah. <laughs> that's really when, the, that's when the largest fruit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel much peace here. I've, I have felt peace, uh, you know, when we kind of get a little quiet in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I have feel a great deal of peace in my body and in my soul. Yeah, lots of peace. Like a rest. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Shana. Oh, great picture, Karen. I just saw it. Yeah, it's the closest I could get. That was what I was seeing as Mandy was describing it. Yeah, you could flip it either way, and it could be either, either way, really. Excluding the leaves. It could be a tree either way. Yeah. Well, I always saw it as the only way you could bear fruit on, during a drought was if your roots were deep enough to keep soaking up the living water or that you've had so much living water soaking in your roots, you have all this extra. We, and yes, and, and also, um, I don't know if all trees do this, but apparently they share their root systems. So they share nutrients and, and yeah, it, it's really amazing, which to me, what does that say? Community, you know, mm -hmm. unity. Just like, <laughs> just like us, just like us. Yeah. I think they do a better job at it. <laughs> They've been doing it longer. So we pray that we do it a long time too. I haven't noticed any divisions happening in my yard amongst my trees here. <laughs> no, no doctrinal issues, right? Right, right. <laughs> they don't care what color they are. Yeah. Yeah, this is really quite a realm. So you talk about the trees and the root system and about them being connected. And I, 
pretty sure I, I don't think it's all types of trees but I'm pretty sure it's the the redwoods um I'm not to look this up but I'm pretty sure it's the redwoods in California the really tall ones I think like the tallest trees in the earth and I'm pretty sure that that type of tree has that type of root system which I think is cool that they're the tallest ones and I'm I'm almost positive that that's the case that they have that type of root system I, I think you're right. I think I did hear about the redwoods, and they are, you know, the known for being the biggest trees in the world. Yeah. Um, and isn't that something? How they all share <laughs> and grow, grow. And I was just talking about that today with my friend in the the redwood forest in California. So I'm just like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> So has anybody seen anything with the uh, the seven? Is it has it has it changed at all, or is it just? Is it? I'm seeing some pictures. Uh, they're just so quick, and uh, just seeing little bitty parts of it. So I'm just going to share them here. Um, I saw those of us that are there. I can't really see faces, but I'm thinking as us and we are now floating and the animals are god i'm not sure how that works sorry but um we're floating and we're receiving we're catching glimpses of or revelation with this and then i'm seeing that um this is like the root system uh, that is connecting us connectivity is happening with us of uh, revelation from that God is sending to us. Now, I don't know how all that, what all that means, but that's just some little glimpses of the pictures that I'm having and I'm thanking God for them and he will show us what that means or if it's a personal thing too. Yes, he will. It's like a puzzle. <laughs> hey, I I'll tell you when I, I um, this, this, uh, you know, the seven, this beautiful seven. Um, I see just all kinds of things, uh, animals and, you know, just beauty, things of God's creation in this seven. And I really almost have a feeling that it's its own realm. Um, and I, I'm, yes, I'm, I don't know if if we need to step into that or not, or just know that it, it's its own living realm, you know, having to do with, you know, creation and perfection. And... I think maybe we should step into it. I was feeling that a little while ago. Okay, great. I felt it open up. I felt it like just yeah. open up a bit and I like saw some birds come out of it, but yeah. um Mm. Yeah, that's kind of what I was feeling that it uh, when it opened up, people were, they were moving, but they were looked like they were in the air. Yeah. And then I, there were thoughts going on. And then I could see the undergrowth with the roots that were going on. But I didn't hear words, but it was like something was being downloaded or transferred to us. Anyway, yeah, that that sounds good. Very good. Yeah, a lot of times we just get a, a sense of what's going on um, and no, no words needed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on the count of four, let's just together step into that seven realm. One, two, three, and four, step in.
You know, the first thing I've, I've seen is, is uh, of all things, a flamingo. <laughs> mm. I feel like I'm in a, um, oh, how can I explain this? It's like I'm in a transparent gel. Like um, I can move around, but it's a bit slow motion because I've got, um, I don't know, like maybe like a fly in oil or something, you know, when it fly mm -hmm. can't move fast. I just feel it's, maybe it's just the atmosphere. I don't know how to say it. Maybe just the atmosphere is really, really thick. And so that all I can relate it to is like a clear gel. I, I felt like um, it was like, I heard the word plasma when you were talking, but plasma of creation i mean yeah that 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 word goes with what i'm saying yeah not that i know exactly what plasma is exactly. except it's something in your body but but that word makes sense <laughs> you know i i looked up the thing about the redwoods because i was just still chewing on it and um this is the interesting fact about their roots that they intertwine, but this is the interesting thing. It said one might think that such a lofty being would require deep roots, but no, the roots only extend down six to 12 feet, but what they lack in depth, they make up for in breadth, extending up to a hundred feet from the tree's base. They intertwine with the roots of others, all holding on to each other, greatly increasing their stability. And I was reading this and you were talking about the flamingo and I think of a flamingo on one leg and just made oh, me yeah. think about this whole concept of the roots and how we hold one another up and bring strength to each other. Yeah, that's really good, Angela. Thank you. Yes, it really resonates. Yeah, I'm really not... I really didn't have a sense of, of what the flamingo was uh, symbolic of. Retired people in Florida, right? No, that's it, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Relaxation. Also, their uh, feathers change colors depending on what they eat. Really? Yeah. So if they eat lots of shrimp, they get the really deep pinks. Okay. This flamingo was definitely pink. <laughs> I just heard that some accounts are being settled. Um, I don't really have any other words, but like there's uh, court cases that are <clears throat> have been at a standstill or a, at rest or whatever, and some court cases are being moved at this time to uh, and God is moving them into the right places so that they can balance out and go forward. Now, I don't know about what I'm saying. That's just what I'm sensing and feeling and hearing. Okay, thank you. It sounds positive, right? <laughs> I'm hoping it's for our nation. <laughs> Uh, I, I feel like we should pray into that I, because I, I just felt like I thought I received that and I don't even know why, but, um, but I, I just feel like we should pray into that. Okay. Would, would, would you uh, do us the honors of just leading us? Cer or certainly. Okay. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that you're going to, that you're settling 
our accounts. Lord, we, even if we don't know exactly what you're doing and we don't, um, we just, we thank you because we know you have our best interest. We can trust you completely. We do trust you completely. Mm -hmm. You have a better plan than anything we could think of or imagine. And we agree with you. We agree with, um, we, we agree with you, whatever you decide for us, but we also repent for anything that we've done wrong, whether we knew about it or not. We just repent um, for uh, even for our ancestors. We repent for our family members. Um, we, we, we just re we repent because we, we want to turn to you. It's not just about saying, I'm sorry, but it's we really want to change we want to eat the right food. We want to be like the flamingo and eat the food that's going to change us to be what you called us to be, what you wrote about us in our book of destiny. We want to change just like the butterfly and transform. We want all those things to happen, Lord. And you're settling accounts for us on our behalf today so that that transformation will happen that that change will happen in our lives each and every one of us and we just thank you for that lord and we're in agreement with you now, I'm, also hearing, I'm also hearing words uh as the father speaks you know and then this one speaks and a lot of people are speaking they're not out of turn but there's just so many cases that are kind of coming to a fruition and uh, it's kind of like in a, uh, like you would see how <clears throat> something from heaven was pouring, you know, how that would look. Well, anyway, it's like it's pulling them up. So it's like drawing them together and pulling them up and settling them. And I'm hearing words, but it's nothing I can like put my finger on it because it's multiple. I'm hearing multiple cases are being solved and completed and uh, anyway. Resolution. I heard the word resolution. Yeah, I mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, thank you, Mary, for for that prayer. And um, I do think that um, this really had uh, the cases have a lot to do with uh, the restoration of creation, and. Um, all, you know, there, there, there could be multiple things revolving around that coming down to us in, as individuals. So um, I think if I might say something here, I went to a place that no one was there. We thought it was a prayer group uh, and it was all Asian owned and, and who's there, but everyone is invited. And while there, me and this other girl that y'all know her too, y'all met her. And um, I just was kind of like quiet. It's like, well, okay, whatever. And then all of a sudden the, the whole thing opened up where I was seeing that um, we were in the, in a space that was called like the restoration of all things kind of a place. And I could see people going in there. And then there were so many people and then this family and that family. And I was seeing the ones that I knew. Then I saw uh, people that I did not know, but they were also coming in. Um, and they were given instructions. It was downloaded to them. And they were just wide-eyed and open. <clears throat> and they were um, being transformed at the same time. They were turning into light beings uh don't know if they turned into color but they had turned into white i actually drew a picture of that with susan she helped me and it was it lasted 30 or 45 minutes it was very moving and then we walked around the little building there you know about the size of say a nice lit you know a good size living room we just walked around and prayed and wept and just did little things that just like wow what is this but um, I believe uh, I was experiencing some of what we're seeing here now today, yeah. even though yeah. they don't really have a lot of language with it. But um, we just want to thank God and, and thank him for his sovereignty, his beauty, his glory, his might. Thank you, Father. Yes, thank you, Father.
in this courtroom setting, I see people walking up to a desk, uh, kind of a thing. And um, they're, they're signing a paper. Um, I don't, I, I'm, what, I, what I feel like, I don't see the paper. I just sense that that's their, uh, that they're coming into agreement with the, um, with this settlement, I guess you, I, I don't know if, the right, if that's the right word or not, but it's like, it's like they're in agreement. They're coming into agreement. In other words, they're not going to contest it. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the word um, resolution. That's what I heard. I'm not exactly sure like what the full definition is, legal definition. Let me look. And I'm seeing the papers are just, there's hundreds or just the stack. Is, the stack is so high. It's kind of hard to, yeah, three, four feet, 500 feet. I don't know, but they're all in a line, but they're coming down <laughs> like a, a deck. Anyway, they're, they're coming down and they're being settled in agreements. I see the, the, the gavel that the judgment thing that the judge does, you know, and is coming down and and uh, they're starting to have the celebration of the victories. Amen. Yes. Okay, here, here, here you go. A firm decision to do or not to do something. Uh, the act of answering or, or solving or determining. So there you go. And I'm seeing colors with it. Um, is it just in the atmosphere of the papers coming down and I see the judge and, and I see a bunch of people, but, but they're all orderly. They're not like crunched together, but I'm seeing yellow. I'm seeing blue around it. Um, so I'm seeing colors that are forming or just appearing in my vision, you know, in sight. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm feeling it too. I sense it, feel it. Uh, it's tangible to me. Uh, kind of like being in a vortex, which is how I originally saw that vision. I was telling you about it. it was a vortex type of place, but it was like no movement really was in it. There was a movement, but we weren't moving. Okay. If that makes sense. It was moving like air was stirring around it gently, but we were in solid, just standing there, whatever. And that's what we're doing. But now the color is overlapping. <clears throat> what does yellow, that's the biggest one that I see the most <clears throat> vibrant or whatever dominant, I, I would say. <clears throat> but there's green and blue. I see a little yeah, red. But green. I'm sorry. Yellow and blue make green. Oh, that's a good, that's good, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't even consider that. Um, yeah, they are kind of floating together, but I do see yellow is kind of like, I guess you would say the center of it, kind of like the culmination of it. That's the, the drawing in part. <clears throat> to me, um, yellow does mean, um, I think, uh, the spirit of understanding and um, or a gift, you know, just a, a gift that you would give someone or a gift given, you know, to you from the Father, something like that. Glory, sunshine. There you go. Yeah, glory, sunshine. Yeah. What does it mean when, um, when uh, the gavel goes down and it's complete? Because that's when I started seeing the colors. So it's kind of like a culmination. Right. So it's almost like the seven spirits of God in the... Uh, the joyfulness, corporate uh, excitement, and confetti is not going yet, but um, I do see all those colors. They're kind of like intermingling, and it's it seems like hallelujah. I just want to agree with the Lord. Praise the Lord for what he's doing and accomplishing. Well, often, I you know, I guess it, it could, when the gavel goes down, that's like, you know, 
judgment is final. Often they do that to um, at the end of the uh, the session. You know, it's over. It's finished. It's done. So that it that all seems to go with what you're saying. And you know, we saw the confetti at the at the very beginning. So mm -hmm. we knew the, the we knew the ending from the beginning, right, Donna? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was thinking. As soon as uh, I'm not sure who it was mentioned about all these papers floating around instantly. I saw the papers coming down. That was the confetti. They were different colors. And when I thought of the, um, the green, um, blue and yellow being green, that's gross, but that's a product of, to me, of that yellow the yellow is the life the breath the mm -hmm. the, the sun sh the the light of god yeah. which yeah. creates the green <clears throat> so i'm just sitting here and i'm praising the lord and i'm just thinking my niece um gave me a pretty serious prayer request in the last few days and me never knowing that she knew about the courts and the councils of God. I just sent her a video yesterday and she came back to me and she says, oh yes, we're there and we're presenting our case because the enemy has come against us like a roaring lion. And when, when we talk about all this coming to a culmination, I just thought, oh, praise God, he is bringing verdicts against the enemy who is stopping us or trying to stop us, not stopping us, trying to stop us from fulfilling our destiny, our scroll. And so this confetti right now, I'm just praising the Lord and I'm dancing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. So somehow, uh, and I'm, I don't really know how to put this in words, but I'm just going to try somehow the colors represent the uh, i don't know if it, the um the fruit of the settlements or these accounts that have been settled now there's fruit coming from that or restitution or i don't really know the right word to put it but it, that that is representing what is coming from the agreement i don't mm -hmm. really does that make does that have any make any sense at all it's it's representing mm -hmm. what's resulting the results the resulting yes the results the from this occurrence yes i don't know if it's restitution or what it is but it it's the fruit of what has happened well answered prayers are trees of righteousness or trees of life it's the other half of hope deferred makes the heart sick but answered prayers is trees of life very good it's what's been released Mm -hmm. <clears throat> thank you jesus thank you jesus yes. and we may not have the right terminology and i'm not really stuck about any of that i think it's wonderful i you know love it down the road to find out the but i know it's a done thing when god does it he does it perfectly he knows what's going on right and he understands it and he's glad that we're participating and, you know, being involved in it. So I thank you for our ability here to see and hear and participate in this. And we give you all praise and honor for all that you're doing, Lord. It is beyond our comprehension and, and even the knowledge and language of it. But we give you all praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we know that you're happy. It makes you happy for us to be in agreement with you. And we, we love it when you're happy. So yes. that makes us happy too. Yes. And, and we just thank you for the things that you're releasing 
uh, over us and over our prayers and over our families and over the earth. We just thank you so much for that. Yes, Lord, thank you so much. The other night, too, while we were doing that, just like a couple of hours one day we went over, and I did see my whole bloodline go into this, I don't know what you would say, uh, funnel, whatever, <laughs> that, was not, that was moving itself, but when we would go in it, it was not moving. But I could still see their faces, and I could see them transform into this light image. And they were getting instructions downloaded to them and they were awestruck, but also knowing how to do whatever that the Lord was telling them to do. So I don't know why I said that, except Lord, if you have that that's on your heart, we receive it, at least I do, and receive it and thank you that you show me what to do with this when the time is right, the time ripens and opens up. And I give you praise and honor. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing tonight. Yeah, this has really been a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, meeting tonight. This realm is just wonderful. Oh, there goes my kitty. She's just talking away. Um, does anybody have anything they'd like to add before we close tonight? I was just thinking about like the ruling of uh, these cases as being part of in Second Corinthians five seventeen as the old has passed away. I feel like this is like part of the old that's passing away by God judging and ruling on these situations that I think have been lingering. I think for a lot of people I know. There's just lingering situation. So, yeah. Yeah, Amen. that's good. That's really Yeah, that's good. very good for thousands of generations, you know, whatever, thousands of years, because I know that mine has gone back all the way through. Not, I don't know that everything is done in my whole generational line, but I've seen it happen, you know, in this just a week ago. And, you know, over the time, we probably all have. So we thank and praise you, God. Glory to God. <laughs> we rejoice. Yeah, glory to you, Father. Hallelujah. We just praise you, Father. We praise your name. We thank you for your goodness and your love and your mercy. We thank you, Father, for showing us this realm and bringing us in to engage with it and to sense and to see all the things you you wanted us to understand tonight. So Lord, we seal this ascension with the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.